Are there any other members? Thank you for that. Thank you, Chairman. I do sympathise with the petitions, I really do. But as um, Councillor said, I think this is absolutely correct. Going back onto what Councillor Ford just said, it's a bit of a grey area. I could sit and discuss something and one person would say that it's absolutely correct. You had another person would say she's predeterminating this. So I think it's something that we've got to take into consideration. It's Councillor Kelly. Uh, I sympathise with the residents too and I'm confused. I don't see how a member can vote for a planning application to be approved and not then be determining their vote when they come to the plan comes before council. That's where my confusion is. Richard. Chairman, uh, apologies, because I, um, I was just conferring with, the, um, with Lee Usher. Could, uh, would you mind repeating the question? I do apologise. I'll try. <laughs> my confusion is that I don't see how uh, a member can vote in the planning committee to approve an application and then not having, not, uh, then not be seen to have determined their vote when it comes to approving the planning proposal for the borough plan. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the, the, I mean, the situation that we have is that um, the, the council um, it, you know, progresses local plans, reviews of local plans um, as it's able to, you know, um, uh, in, in an expedient timeline, but it is a complicated process. Um, we have a uh, local plan at the present time, and we're in the process of reviewing that. When we come to planning applications, those planning applications have to be, it's a regulatory function, we have uh, certain timelines within which we have to determine those planning applications. Um, and um, th th certainly on major, on smaller applications, eight weeks, major applications, 13 or potentially 16 weeks. Um, and as been mentioned, if we don't make a determination within those t um, time periods, then we're open to what's called a non-determination appeal, which means that the applicant uh, effectively pushes it to government for independent examination, and we've lost the ability to determine it. Um, so we need to determine those planning applications in accordance with those timelines. We can sometimes change the timelines in agreement with the applicant, but only in agreement with the applicant. Um, so the critical thing is we have to determine those applications based on the planning policy, local plan position at the time. We have the benefit of an existing adopted local plan in three parts, the core strategy, the science plan, and the well-born plan. And we have to determine planning applications that are coming in on our books. Um, you know, in the light of that local plan, and it's in accordance with the local plan, unless there's other material considerations. We have to, uh, have to, to a degree, I mean, we are mindful of the fact we may be reviewing the local plan, but we have to consider the applications uh, against the current local plan. Finally, I would, I would add that as the draft local plan progress, progresses through its various different stages, um, we potentially can give it more weight in terms of our planning um, consideration of planning applications, but the fact of the matter is we have to determine the, the applications that come in. We just can't sort of effectively not entertain them. Can I ask a question? Yes, yeah, you bar me. Um, the, all these people who own this land and are developing this land, they all know the dates you're doing everything. So they are going to get all their applications in before you've done all your bits and pieces that they know about. So they're all going to get approved because you're looking at the old plan, but you're basing it on the new plan, mm -hmm. which hasn't even been approved yet. So you're allowing all these applications through. This should be done on the existing local plan because the new one isn't even approved. But they're not. You're losing both. Can I just interrupt there? Yeah. I understand what you're saying and I do understand your feelings. I genuinely do. I live in Portchester with the amount of development that's going to go so through. why? We're why here that today, happening? and I don't want to seem rude, but we're here no. today to discuss your petition and that is what we're going to do. Oh yeah, right, I'll put it in writing. Yeah. Okay. 
Members, any other questions? We have to cons we have considered all the reasons given for the complaint, and now we have to make our decision. <coughs> the options open to us are given on the report, page 11 of our agenda pack. A, to agree with the steps taken by the council in response uh, to the submitted petition were correct, or to determine if any or all of the reasons given for the complaint should be upheld in which the, scrut the case the scrutiny board may use of any of its powers to deal with the matter. These powers can include requesting that the chief executive offer, officer conducts an investigation. However, as been highlighted in Appendix C to the report, it is not possible for the scrutiny board to set a date for the debate of the petition at the council meeting. It is also not possible for the planning application uh, to be recalled or delayed. And if the scrutiny board determines to uphold any element of the complaint, then they are reason they will give the reasons what must give them along with what course of action should be taken. In order to resolve this matter, members, we shall need a formal proposal and a second a motion based on one of the options open to us. Do members wish to debate or do one of you have a proposal? Uh, thank you, Chairman. I uh, propose that we agree with my committee. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Davis. All those in favour? Councillor Ford. All those against? Councillor Ford. Thank you very much.